In my previous video, I talked about the interlining the IRT in Brooklyn, aka fixing Rogers Junction. While Rogers Junction is indeed a major point of delay of the IRT or A division, it is not the only one. Today, we will take our focus to the north and talk about the interlining IRT in Upper Manhattan and in the Bronx. So let's first look at the major bottlenecks we have in this section of the IRT. First off, the Adgrade Junction at 142nd Street on the Lenox Avenue line. Here, the 2 and 3 split off, the 2 goes to the Bronx, and the 3 goes to Harlem, 148th Street. However, since this is an Adgrade Junction, northbound 3 trains have to cross over the southbound 2 train tracks, and vice versa. After 142nd Street Junction, the 2 continues to the Bronx, and right before 149th Street Grand Concourse, we are at Mott Interlocking, with 5 joins the 2 to run on the White Plains Road line. First of all, this service pattern creates a reverse branch. Secondly, the 5 train has to go through this sharp S curve before the merge, limiting speeds to 10 miles per hour, which causes delays. The 142nd Street Junction and Mott interlocking in Upper Manhattan and in the Bronx, along with Rogers Junction in Brooklyn, are a big reason for the capacity limits and delays on the 2, 3, 4, and 5 trains. So how can we address the issue? Well, there are various solutions, some simple, some complicated. I will discuss the most popular ones and talk about the pros and cons of each of them. Just to be clear, in the plans below, unless I mention it, I assume that the routes in Brooklyn are swapped based on my previous plan, meaning 2 and 3 trains will run to Flatbush Avenue and Brooklyn College, 4 and 5 trains will run to New Lots Avenue and Crown Heights, Utica Avenue, respectively, one running express and one running local. The first the interlining plan is for the 2 and 3 trains to run along White Plains, and the 4 and 5 trains to run along Jerome. The 3 train will take over the Dyer Avenue line from the 5, and a shuttle train will run between 135th Street and Harlem, 148th Street as a replacement for the 3 train. For this to work, 135th Street station needs to be reconfigured for the shuttle train, and 142nd Street Junction needs to be grade separated. This theme turning plan will eliminate the reverse branch at 149th Street Grand Concourse between the 2 and 5 trains, and the need to go through that S-curve that causes delays. This plan will also help increase capacity on the 3 train. Because of the 142nd Street Junction, 3 train capacity remained the same after Rogers Dean planning, running at 11 trains per hour in the southbound direction and 8 trains per hour in the northbound direction. Under this plan, 2 and 3 combined can run 30 trains per hour, meaning that 3 can run between 13 to 15 trains per hour. However, this plan does have downsides. The biggest one might be the 1C ride argument for riders of 145th Street, Harlem 148th Street stations, and riders along White Plains and Dyer Avenue who want Lexington service. For White Plains and Dyer riders, they would have to transfer at 149th Street Grand Concourse for Lexington service. To accommodate the passenger flow, I will use the plan by Van Schnick and Racken, where the station will be expanded and elevators will be added. Additionally, a new Metro-North station added here will help provide faster service to Midtown East. There is a way to preserve 1C rides at 145th Street and 148th Street, which introduces my second option. The second option will involve adding the 8th train. The 8th train proposal was also mentioned in my Rogers Junction D lining video, but was not chosen for fixing Rogers. Under this plan, the 5 will still be routed along Jerome, but the 8 will go to the Bronx instead of the 3, which can be kept at Harlem 148th Street. The 8 will have the same route as the 2 until Franklin Avenue in Brooklyn, where it will run local to Utica Avenue. In this case, the 4 and 5 will run express east of Franklin Avenue. While this plan does preserve a 1C ride for 145th Street and 148th Street, 
Note that the 2, 3, and 8 trains will have to split the track capacity of 30 trains per hour. In Plan 1, white planes will get all 30, but in order to save the 1C ride, a certain number of those trains will have to serve 145th Street and 148th Street instead. So under this plan, white planes will get fewer trains compared to Plan 1, and headways on the 3 train will be lower than what it gets today unless capacity on white planes is greatly sacrificed, which is not what we want to do. So I think running more frequent shuttle trains and scheduling the trains for a time transfer at 135th Street with a 2 would probably be better than a 1C ride that is very infrequent. The third option is proposed by Mystic Transit, so credits to him here. And it isn't really the inclining, but a reconfiguration to mod interlocking. The plan involves building a new, smoother tunnel connection for the 5 train, where it will skip 149th Street Grand Concourse and join the 2 train east of the station. This new tunnel will allow higher speeds compared to the 10 mile per hour speed limit on the current S curve. With this plan, service patterns on the northern end will remain the same for all services. While this option does preserve 1C rides, it also keeps reverse branching which means the capacity might not increase by much. And if we are spending money on a new tunnel, we want to increase capacity to make it worth the price. So I don't see this as the best idea. Another plan that caught my attention is for a new tunnel to the Bronx between 145th Street and 149th Street Grand Concourse. Under this plan, the 148th Street station will be closed and converted back to a maintenance facility and 145th Street Station will have platforms extended north to serve those who use 148th Street Station. Then, a new tunnel will be constructed north of 145th Street to the existing 149th Street Grand Concourse Station, replacing the current tunnel. After the tunnel is built, both 2 and 3 trains will use that new tunnel and run along the White Plains Rail Line in the Bronx. This plan gives White Plains 30 trains per hour, the same as the first plan, and preserves the 1C ride for 145th Street riders. 148th Street Station riders should have a similar distance to the expanded 145th Street Station. However, the cost is a deal breaker here, as you are adding a new tunnel into the plan. That will be a massive capital project. So, among these options, where would I choose for deinterlining the IRT in Upper Manhattan and in the Bronx? Being realistic, the first plan is what I will go for, with frequent time transferred shuttle trains and expanded 149th Street Grand Concourse with Metro North service, it will make up for the loss of 1C rides, while riders will be gaining more frequent and reliable service. As for the new tunnel between 145th Street and 149th Street Grand Concourse, since it is only bringing back 1C rides for two stations, it is not a priority on my list. I won't consider it until many other projects are built. But if it does get built, two and three trains will be rerouted via the new tunnel. What are your thoughts on the entire the IRT in Upper Manhattan and in the Bronx? Share with me in the comments below. If you have not, please check out the first part of this the entire the IRT series, Fixing Rogers Junction. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in that video.